Good day. So, um, gonna resume working on the garbage collector. Now, last time I left off when I had to leave the room to go uh, see my son. Uh, he woke up from sleep. Um, and, but I wasn't sure how to continue. We got to a point where I was like, okay, where's, where's the next step? Um, and, um, so I've had a think. And so we now know, uh, I've got some ideas about what type of collector we want and, and what we're going to do, uh, to get there. So one of my main indecisions was actually whether the collector should be conservative or accurate. Um, and, uh. Sorry about, if there's any background noise uh, this time, it's the heater switching on some of the time. Uh, I'm sorry if that happens. So it's happening right now. Um, so, yeah, whether the uh, collector should be conservative or, or accurate, I wasn't sure how to go about, uh, at least for now, exporting all the pointer information from the language um, uh, to build an accurate collector. Because in the long run, it's going to be an accurate garbage collector. Uh, but for now, it's reasonable just to meet our minimum goals of just being able to collect up memory that we're not using to, for it to be conservative. So that's where we're going to start. So <clears throat> what we've got, so what we're going to do, it's going to be a mark sweep collector. It's going to be a non-moving collector, which is actually implied by being conservative. Uh, non-moving means it's uh, it can't be generational or, or well, sorry, you can get a, con a generational non-moving collector, but anyway, it's, you can't, once memory is allocated, it stays where it is in a non-moving collector. It's conservative, which means that it has to guess what a pointer is. Um, it can't, it can't accurately determine which values in memory are pointers. So if something is, looks like a pointer, we're going to assume that it's a pointer. And we do that by checking the range of the value to see if the value actually, if it is a pointer, whether it falls within the heap and, and reaches a valid object. Uh, we're also going to support some interior pointers. I didn't write that down. Pointers of up to byte offset on 64 bits. That's because the language supports pointer tagging and so a neat way to handle that is to actually model that as having interior pointers. So the when we allocate new memory we're going to take memory from free lists which are uh, generated during sweeping. We may even have a single free list with with all the objects in it in in order just to make it really naive we can come back and optimize this later but this will do to meet enough goals that we can move on to the next step uh, of the language um, and all the bookmark uh, bookkeeping information will be stored next to the objects in the heap not in big bag of pages style or anything else so we're just it's going to be fairly naive, but actually really naive like that. So, uh, let's get going. Oh, because I didn't save that. There we go. Let's see where we're at. One test case failure. Thank you. 
how to do this first. We get to a point... That's still not very good. That's actually... Calling a board. Is that? Oh, that's because that's what we do. Let's say... It's just going to help just double check that we're getting to the right spot. Hello, uh, Nox. Nox is a cat. Hi, Nox. How are you going? It's definitely hitting that, hitting that condition that I wanted it to hit. So, what we have... This is when... Yeah, okay, so we run out of things. I'm going to rename... First thing I'm going to do is rename that to the wilderness pointer because that's what it will be. Let's fix that up. Hope you have a good lunch. So Knox is saying hi. I assume it's my buddy Knox from Paris. Um, he's having lunch. That all makes sense. So say baguette if you're the real deal. And yeah, okay, so we missed a couple. So, wilderness in garbage collection terms is the place where you haven't allocated memory to yet. So it's it's untouched. And I'm going to move that to the new line to make that a bit neater. We're going to need free lists to allocate from, but before we get to that, we actually have to get to a point where we're trying to reclaim memory, so which is here. No, oh, that's not here. I'm not even looking properly. I'm not reading properly. put that elsewhere. So, we need to try and allocate a couple of times before we fail. So, cell. I'm going to move that out of the way.
if cell is null try once more if we fail to allocate and One thing that I wish all memory, alloc all memory uh, allocation routines did, so that you never had to check the return address of, say, malloc in C, is if they can't allocate memory, don't return null, call a handler function that the user provides. Then you never have to check the return address as null, and you could just throw a fatal error or raise an exception or do whatever it is that you need to do. And that way you're not having this check every time you call malloc. It's just not necessary. And because it doesn't work anyway under, for example, Linux, because uh, of the way the way Linux manages its memory internally, it can return a valid pointer when there's actually no memory behind it, uh, which is fairly common. So it wouldn't help you anyway. I think that's because the actual uh, the memory allocator doesn't know whether it succeeded or not. So if cell is null, so here's where we want our out of memory abort. We can put that there. That's good. Now we need that try allocate routine and collect. So void star try allocate easy heap if that then return false and <coughs> good now let's actually I'm sure that that's going to be fine. Well, actually, no, we need to. Yeah, we still need to do something. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Now, we need to declare this uh, before we use it. We need to declare after those statics, after structures, but before globals. Is that a. Ah, I see. Well, yeah, they're going to be global anyway. All right. Okay, so forward declare your local static function. And we need to also declare and define collect. Turns void, takes the heap only, not a size, and it is called collect. And now it needs to be defined. It's going to go here. Yep. Good. Now I want to tidy up a little bit. One thing I want to do is separate. I've got forward declarations and static, vari static variables. Now, I'm going to do a Vim thing. I want to 
76 insert star. That didn't work. You call that 76? Really only want that many. So this just gives some visual separa separation. So initialization and packing up the heap can go there. I kind of like the idea of using the vertical, the, the a vertical tab as well, which some people do. Try allocate. This is just going to keep things separate. See, that's why, because I didn't want one there, because here, those, those are related, so those belong in the same section. So now, to actually collect memory, we have to trace the roots, which means we need we need here a copy of the program stack and any globals. How best to do that? Should they be passed in at all times? Should it call back? It shouldn't call back. That would be painful. Hmm. Let's take a look at the runtime code. Okay, we need to pass the expression stack, this one. We won't need to pass the return stack, not yet. Um, not until we merge the closures branch and there's actually data on that stack. And, and which is also when functions will become garbage collected objects as well. For now that's not happening. So I don't think... We do need the entry module. We need the PZ program as well so that we can get the list of all the data. Uh, is that stack allocated though? I mean, is that heap allocated? I don't believe it is. Okay. Yeah, I think I would just want to do this the simplest way I can first. Which yeah means passing my passing a pointer to the base of the expression stack. And also yeah, the other thing that I'm thinking is is this is what what's going on in my mind. Is that if I can keep them separate, uh keep um sorry, keep these modules unrelated, so pass the expression stack but don't tell it what type of data is on there and try and keep it modular whether it grows up or grows down but I it's gonna be messy in the future anyway I'm just gonna do it the simple way I can I can make it less messy like it's not gonna be messy until it really gets messy in which case I can think about it then um, because yeah there'll be because it's going to get way messier when there's native code generation and all that stuff anyway. So, I want the expression stack and the current expression stack pointer. What if when we set up the heap, we give it the base of the expression stack? That's 
going to be not too messy. How does that interact? It's going to... We're going to have to really think about that when we add other threads as well. Because then there'll be more than one stack. So, expression stack, return stack, heap. See, things like that are allocated on malloc. And we're going to go through and do an audit of all of all the calls to malloc later. So that we can put many things on that, on the heap in the GC. Um, because even information about code loading will, um, will be on the heap as well. So that you can do hot code loading. Anyway. <coughs> So do the heap after here, pass it a copy of the expression stack, oh, a reference to the bottom of the expression stack. And we will also do So GC int is now taking a uh, void under to the stack. Mm. Right, and alloc, which takes now the size and the thing, now also needs to take a pointer to the top of stack. It'll be the memory just past the top of stack. And I'm making that avoid pointer rather than the offset that's actually used in the interpreter because, like I said, this, the GC won't have access to the type of the data on the stack. So it's going to access it as just memory, which means we're actually going to compute the address when we call pzgc alloc. <clears throat> Not the most efficient, but there's, there's worse efficient inefficiencies. We've got, okay. Yeah. That'll do. Let's do all these. Void pointer stack. Um, Is where we calculate the address at the top of the stack. So we take the address of the expression stack offset by the current stack pointer. Now, here's the expression stack set correctly at that point. It is currently pointed at at the top of the stack. So I'm trying to remember if I always have it pointing at the next free value on the stack or just at the current value. It looks like since this is pre-increment, so move the expression stack up, then assign a value in. It's pointing at the current valid thing on the top of the stack. So I'd like a plus one there because I'd like it to point just beyond the top of the stack. like particularly with live streaming that I feel like I'm saying oh yeah we'll optimize this later we'll optimize this later and that I'm saying that all uh, a lot 
Um, I don't... Well, obviously when I'm not live streaming, there's nobody to say it to, but I feel like I've, I'm wanting to justify it more just because people are out there. <clears throat> okay. So... Yeah, I just did that. So... Oh, runtime, easy, run, easy, easy, let's see. Now we can begin collecting some more memory. First, oh yeah, and we need, there's other things that we need to trace as well um, to, to do marking. And that is... the PZ structure. Can I... Do I get all modules? I need to get... Mm. You know what? And right now I'm thinking that this, the work I'm about to do here, I'll have to, I'll get to delete later once I finish on closures because all this data will then be DC allocated as well. Uh, so I won't need to consider it roots for marking. However, for now... Well... Is data... I want to know if the data, this one here, which is why I'm looking here, is actually GC allocated at all. If it's not, then I can get away with not doing this for now. PZ that module set data. That is called from PZ read. I should have guessed that. Should have known that. This data value here, it is PZ data new array data and PZ data new basic data, which is malloced in that case, and malloced in that case. Okay, so I can avoid doing this work for now because it's currently malloced, and it won't be won't be on the heap, won't point to anything on the heap, so it's not considered a root for the purposes of garbage collection. Which means... We're ready to start writing the collector. Wilderness pointer. Um, the base of the stack, save that there. Now when it tries to allocate, it gives the top of the stack. The top of the stack gets passed into collect of the stack. Oh, this is exciting. I can't believe I said that. Top of the stack there. I sure hope my microphone is open. Um, I don't want to make that mistake again. One sec. Yeah, microphone's fine. Cool. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So collect point point at top of stack. Remember that's actually one past the top of the stack. Cool. We're not making any 
terrible errors. So... What's the time? Yeah, it's just ten past nine. <clears throat> so now we want to mark the roots. So we start at the stack. Current address that we're going to consider. And we're going to consider them as double pointers. For void the current address is heap stack and it should always be less than the top of stack because that's one beyond that's why we made it one position beyond the end of the stack and it doesn't increment by bytes it increments by machine word size And that lets us step through the program stack. Okay, now for each thing on the program stack, if current, if it looks like this is our, if it looks like a pointer test, if it is less than heap. What's the name of the bottom of the heap? Base address. So if it's actually greater than or equal to the base address of the heap and less than heap wilderness, then we consider it to be a pointer. And we need to mark that cell and add it to our mark stack. Do we use the C program stack to implement the mark stack? So if you've just joined in, we're writing a mark sweep garbage collector. And I mean, a lot of them use some extra memory to do that. Um, some can go without having a mark stack because they use extra bits, extra mark bits. Um, all kinds of things. Oh, nuts. I need a way to know if the thing I'm looking at is even a valid address. Like if it's, is it an allocated cell or is it something in between cells? Because of the way I want to store the mark, the, the mark bits and other bookkeeping information. Hmm. Yeah, because I was going to store that stuff in the heap in line with the other, with the cells themselves. I need to do that thinking off camera, I think. Um, it's really hard to concentrate when you know somebody's watching. Concentrate in that kind of a way. Uh, let's see if I can solve it quickly, though. pointer points at the wrong thing on the heap, then it would have to somehow find the beginning of that object if there is one. How does it know it's a valid object? 
when patterns in the objects themselves could look like the right kind of bookkeeping data. So I can't use a magic value. I can't use Now, a normal system would use a big bag of pages or something at this point. Um, and I wanted to write the dumbest simple, the, 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 one of the dumbest collectors in the fewest lines of code I can. Um, well, fewest complex lines of code, just... <clears throat> so, do I want to put that kind of info in a big mark, in a big bitmap, analogous to the mark bitmap. Hmm, I can. <coughs> No. Let's go with that for now. I mean, it's gonna, that's what's gonna be there anyway. Depending upon how we implement the mark stack, if it's not a, if it's not using the program stack, then then we want to continue marking. And then do our sweeping. So. I think we would be better off. I'm going to make another change too. I'm going to move try allocate into the section with allocation here. Because that local is only used there. Now it has nothing to do with C semantics, that just has to do with layout. And I'm doing that because I'm going to introduce a new one here for marking. to decide how I organize information that tells me where the beginnings of objects are in on the heap. Meanwhile, I can, yeah, I think I want to make that a separate bitmap. I mean, I had an idea to make that a separate bitmap for some reasons anyway. Oh no, for the nursery of a of an eventual of an eventual um generational collector. But I was still going to use a normal I think I was gonna use big bag of pages for their tenured area. Uh so eventually we're gonna move this to big bag of pages. Which we could do now maybe. No, I think I'd rather evolve Particularly that I'm live streaming this. I want to do a minimal thing um, and move on later. 
So, <clears throat> let us let us create a separate bitmap for that in particular. Now, if we've got a megabyte's worth of heap data, well, we, so now I need to know how big to make that bitmap. bitmap. Notice that it's made of bytes because C. That'll do for now. I mean, we can address it in terms of bits, but in the interest of keeping this really simple, I could make it a byte map. I mean, If I make it a byte map, waste a few bits per byte, then I could put the mark bits in there as well. So, <clears throat> how much space do I need? If my heap I'm going to do it for the maximum size of one megabyte. So, heap bit map. Now, there are there are machine word size bytes per word yeah it's hard to think through while I'm talking so I want one mark per object my heap can store Not PZ GC heap size, PZ max GC max heap size. My heap can store that many bytes. There are that many words, pointers per byte. So that's the total number of objects I can have on the heap, I think. Yes, and that gives us one bit per. One, one byte per object in the bitmap, in the byte map. Now, all right, so it might not be clear exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm having one byte per potential object. Um, G'day loaded code, how's it going? So let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, I'm not placing necessarily placing one byte per object, but one byte per potential place where an object could begin in the heap. So if an object is present in that location, we'll set like the first bit to one to tell us that that's the beginning of an object in that heap location. So, we need a is if that and that and is valid object. Mm 
then we begin marking. Cool, the, now we need something to say is valid object. That's a bit more general, so I'm going to put it in a, this section up here. Static pool is valid object. Now, that should ideally test the range as well, and it should eventually be in lined uh, to make it efficient because it's going to be called a lot. Uh, but we're not going to do that now. We're going to do correctness first. So. If it is in the right range, and okay, we need a way to say is it uh, which which byte we should check at. So this is. This is the offset from the base address of this pointer. They're both void pointers, or one's a void pointer pointer. I'd feel better making them integers before I did this arithmetic because they're different types anyway. Um, unsigned byte. Call it index. Just pointer minus um, so that's a pointer sized integer. If you're learning C and of heap base address. So the difference between those is what we're currently looking at. Um, and that's measured in bytes, so we need to make that into words. So divide by parens, parens, divide by machine word size. And that should give us the index of the item into the byte map. So, if that. Now remember, all we have to do is compute a boolean, so we don't need an if statement, we can just compute the boolean from the condition of the else that we would have made. And, heap bitmap index is and right, we need some defined values for our bytes in this bitmap Alright, 
so. So if it is allocated, then that pipe will be set. And you see bitmap allocated. And because I forget um, the order of expressions in C, I often use parens even if I don't need them. So now we need to ensure that G testing this is going to be crazy. You can just see the bugs now. <clears throat> um, now I need to ensure that those that bitmap gets filled in during allocation. I feel like, which means this calculation, get index, should also be made separate. Static, unsigned, yeah. Object index from void pointer and heap. And I'm only using a single pointer here because I don't need a double pointer because I don't really need one there anyway. It's fine writing lots of small functions. We'll fix, I mean, it'll get more efficient later. of distinct pointer types top of stack which is a void pointer and current which is a double void pointer if I make I'll change it if I ever need to change it later on yeah, at the point when I need to dereference it that's smarter is valid up no, let's just try it. Conflicting types for this valid object. Oh yeah, okay. That one there. So I'll go double pointer. Next error. Next error. Next error. Yep. Okay. So. We've got is something about that's right. Now I need to fill in the bitmap during allocation. Yeah, so. so heap. And every cell's gonna start off with the same bit, so I can use assignment rather than a uh, bit bitwise operation. Heap bitmap. index that was handy huh that's why we put, make things little functions heap cell equals GC bitmap allocated dumb hey you know what I forgot this
That would have been a problem. Uh, okay. Oh, I've got implicit declaration of memset. Memset comes from string.h, I think. Yeah. Okay, it says right there. expecting anything different. Anyway, so we have... Oh, I forgot something else. Because that gets quite a large amount of memory. I mean, it would be better to get it from MMAP. Um, doesn't really matter. Come I mean, eventually it'll be in line, like it'll be in, in block headers within the main heap. the program stack as the bit as as the mark stack you know what it's going to be really simple and easy to do that until it overflows how likely is it that I'm actually going to overflow the C stack not very not for a long time none of the test cases that I've got at the moment will do that so is that what I want? Ah, I need something else in allocation. We need to know the sizes of objects as we're, as we're marking. Um, yeah, which I was going to say, I could get that from the next allocated Ref uh, allocated um, um, bit, but that only tells me for allocated things. It doesn't tell me for um, if something's been free or unused or something like that. I would be looking at the wrong data. While I remember, I'm going to stream next on, I think on Thursday during the daytime, so it'll be a, a bit earlier, it may be suitable for the west coast of the USA, so which will be a bit different. Um, yeah. Oh, and I forgot to record this one as I was generating so that um, I could put it to YouTube again. Ah, well, I'll have to... I'll do that separately again. It's a pain, but... Um... So what do we need to keep going? I 
need mark bits and a mark stack. If I use the program stack, I won't crash yet. Um, it won't run out. And of course, if I used my own mark stack, it could still run out. Um, I just have the option of being able to handle it in a bunch of different ways. And since I have whole bytes per um, per um, um, object, I can use three colors and therefore totally just wipe out the mark stack and start from scratch each time it overflows. Just a neat thing you can do. It uh, was really confusing the first time I saw that. Like, I saw a GC that uh, overflowed the mark stack. I was like, okay, I'll just make a new one. And did that. And it was, it was like, huh? How are they doing that safely? And yeah, it's because um, they could reprocess all the mark bits they'd written and do that. Which is something that's neat to do if you're already if you're already using whole bytes, which you might be because you might be doing concurrent collection, which means you're doing whole bytes per per mark. Okay. So, we could also store object sizes somewhere. I'm going to put them, I'll put them in line. That'll be easy. It'll be, it'll use the, less, the least memory. Now that I've got that bitmap, I mean, the problem with putting stuff in line earlier was that I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to use it to know where the beginning of an object is. But now I've got that bitmap, I will know where the beginning of an object is, so I can still put things in line. So. <clears throat> Cell is the wilderness pointer. Um, going to put this test right at the beginning. Because we don't just need the wilderness pointer, we need plus size in bytes plus machine word size because we're going to take up, because we're lazy, a whole um, machine word for that uh, for that information, the, the size of each cell. Which means now I can do cell as a wilderness pointer. Um, <clears throat> I make cell a double pointer, then I can say I can cast cell to a uint pointer t pointer cell and <coughs> set that to the size of the object. Then move cell up to the next word. The reason that works, this line here, is because cell's a double pointer. It's going to use, it's going to move it up by one hole, like by a void pointer, because that's the type of the pointer. Um, it's a little bit, it's confusing to follow in this example, but it's, it's all good. You know what, I could have just... You know what, I should have just put that there. Take that out of there. Yeah, 
That's what I want. Alright, and remember that 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 byte of whether something is allocated, uh, that, that, that set is set at the... So what we've got, we, we should maybe document this. Uh, here, here we'll do for now. before that uh, contains modify this in the future it will be I think it'll be fairly easy to modify I mean as easy as any collector is and I think a lot of that might be by replacing replacing it like I said we're just after the simplest collector that'll do the job for now so we've got a bitmap size information All right we're back to our mark stack question well I wonder how we're doing let's see Let's see how many root objects we mark. This is gonna give us an idea about, about whether we're on doing okay, because I it's hard to see if we're if this code is running and, and being tested or coming up with something completely bogus. I mean it's not crashing, but Ah. We need to 
dereference the pointer once we cast it so that we can assign to it. Otherwise, it's not an L value. Warning for unsigned int. This says warning format D expects an argument of type int, but argument for has typed long unsigned int. zero out of that many root pointers. That means something is wrong. Step through this with the debugger. If it is a valid thing, oh, where are we? Okay. Oh. I'm a dummy. So what we want to do when we test whether something is a valid object is test the thing that it points to, particularly here. So we do need a dereference there. This has to be a double pointer. Uh, Because it's a double pointer, not a void pointer, I should have done that the whole time as well. Because of reasons I just told told you. So I was just explaining that and I didn't even follow it properly. Okay. That's more like it. So we can now mark the root objects. Now we need You know what, if I'm not lazy and I actually make a root uh, a mark stack. Um, I don't know. something out the window but it was the moon well I'm actually not that far from having a working collector I reckon I could finish it in another hour if I don't get any bugs 
and I've already had one bug, so yeah. Oh no, I won't get the, um... I could almost... I, I could... F two hours and I could finish it. Which means I will do a little bit more and then leave the rest for Thursday. And finish it then. Um, for now, let's get the mark stack running and I'll do sweeping on Thursday. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use a physical mark stack. I don't... For efficiency, sure, it's going to be faster if I actually don't use the program stack. But the program stack will lead me to doing more faster. And it will be harder to thread through any, um, any of these debugging printfs um, if I do use the physical stack, the, the program stack. However, well, let's see. Let's do that. And I'll, I can always, it's the easiest one to start with and then change is to use the program stack. I can always use the one, the other kind later. So, first we need the object size. should move more things to not use unsigned to actually use a size type. Uh, it does only need 32 bits, but you know. Um, so the size, as we recall, is integer t star is what we get if we dereference our pointer. Oh, and uh, unit pointer. Now those brackets could be around just cur minus one if we wanted because those pointers have the same size, which is kind of nice. It's a little more foolproof. So we get the size. Now we get <clears throat> now we four cur. We're already at the right at the beginning, so don't bother that. Actually, let's call it pointer because I'm going to introduce a new for void. There is less than pointer plus. Size is that that is size in bytes, not size in words. So now it's size in words. Move to the next one now. <coughs> Check out each pointer thing. If it's a valid object, keep marking. Ah, that should be referenced there too. Yeah, 
and that should do all the marking. Oh, we well, forgot something. Heap bitmap in um, index, is that what I called it? Heap pointer. We need to actually mark it. Bitmap mark. Ah, and another thing. We need to... Is this not a... Um, oh, hello, uh, uh, one, one top wheezy. Um, is your question, which operating system am I using, or what operating system am I writing? Because, because I'm not writing an operating system. And I'm using uh, Linux Mint. I'm writing a new programming language called Plasma. It's at plasmalang.org. <clears throat> so, for... For this next one, this valid object... Yeah, I also want to check that it hasn't been marked already. So, is valid object and is is marked. Because we don't want to go round in circles and um, and loop infinitely, which we would have done if um, if we didn't check that for each thing we'd visit, because we just keep visiting the same the same loop of nodes. So that's how you stop your garbage collector from endlessly following cycles. So we need a function that does that now. Is valid object and is marked. <clears throat> There's a few more of this stuff that could be abstracted out to functions. Anyway, uh, is marked is is the heap bitmap of the object with this index heap pointer da 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 does it oh and I know another error now GC bitmap marked double bang so that so that it becomes a boolean not just non-zero but actually one which is a little more better current set of bits there. And I need to define it. Uh, 
So I'm working on the garbage collector of a new programming language. Um, if you've just tuned in, it's a mark sweep collector and I'm aiming to make one of the simplest, most naive collectors that I can so that I can move on to other parts of the project. Oh, you were AFK? It's, um, I'm working on a new programming language, um, but I'm using Mint Linux. And the new programming language is called Plasma. Um, you can find that at plasmalang.org. should be it for the marking. I mean it terminates so there's that. Well now the marking's done there which means we're up to doing the sweeping uh, which I'm going to leave. Well there's seven viewers right now if I quit then I'll leave them all. Um, which I was going to leave for um, for Thursday. I will... Yeah, but basically my plan is to sweep through the heap uh, now, that I've, now that I've done the marking. Use the mark bits to know what memory is in use and what isn't. Uh, reset the allocated bits of the unused memory and allocate it to a free list which will then... Then I'll update the allocation routine so that it uses the free list. Um, when when there is one and then defaults back to the wilderness. Um, we can also set certain thresholds lower so that it uses uh, if it finds that the free lists have become empty it'll use the wilderness a bit and then do a collection before it completely exhausts the heap. So. Yep. <laughs> one top wheezy. Yes you're right code or die. Um, you you have to work hard to get things out of life. Um, it's it's tricky. Um, yeah. So uh, so I'm going to call it an evening. Um, I'm fairly happy with that. I wish I had a little bit more proof that it was working. Um, but that's what happens when you only implement half of something. So, but I think that's good, and I can finish that. Um, yeah, on Thursday. What else do I have to say? Um, I might do follow-up streams where we... I mean, I'll keep streaming. But I might do follow-up GC ones where we improve this. Um, but uh, I actually, I'll probably go on to other tasks for a little while and come back to GC later where, we, where I improve it. Um, by, by making it an accurate collector um, and working on a few efficiencies. So making it a big bag of pages would be better. Um, but this will do for now. All right. Um, have a good evening, everyone. I'm just going to commit what I've got. Yeah. Just to double check I didn't mess anything up spaces from the end of lines. That's better. Yep, so the next stream I'll do on Thursday during the daytime. Um, I don't know when exactly. Uh, Mm, 
No, I'll do it on Friday. Yeah, I'll do it on Friday at about 10 a.m. at Australian Eastern Time. So that's midnight UTC. Hey, C bro. Um, I don't recognize your handle. But I was just finishing up, so I'm. I guess I'm gonna have to disappoint you. Another thing I'll do as I finish up the garbage collector is implement a few sanity checks. So, one of those will be will be root uh, will be poisoning. So after you collect some memory, you delete, you wipe it out, wipe it out with some other pattern, so that anybody reading the memory gets gets a bad pointer. And you do that only in debug and, and testing builds, but it helps ensure that things are stable. So you'll crash earlier if you do the wrong thing rather than later on in production. Mark. And the other thing you can do is just collect more often to stress the collector a bit more. And that will help with that. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, good night, everyone. Uh, sleep well, have a good week. See you on Friday. <laughs>